We are live. Fantastic. Welcome, everybody. And thank you so much all for joining us. And very special thanks to Donna Reed and Chantal Mugens, who are with us today to share their insight and inspiration, especially with regard to communications and design. So exciting stuff. And they also are co-hosts of a podcast, which is called Things That Matter. And um, it's really wonderful, really informational. And I've been really enjoying listening to it. Thank you both, ladies. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> so what I'd like to say is all of you who are with us, um, just give us a wave, give us a little comment to let us know if you're here, uh, whether you are watching live with us now or if you're watching the replay. And we will follow along if you have any comments or questions as we go. Those will pop up in our chat. Uh, there's sometimes a slight time delay, but we will keep in touch with that. And um, just for any of you who are not yet familiar with me, I'm a long-time professional photographer, videographer, and trainer, passionate about helping visionary women in particular to shine on camera and become the star of their brand. And I love chatting with ladies like these who are really in the business of also helping people put their message out there. From a design point of view, that is Donna. She has her own below the line agency doing design and layout and print and including the full process from conceptualization all the way through to um, uh, the end product. So I'm sure she has a lot to share with us. And Chantal is a specialist in communications. So that's everything, including writing, editing, proofreading, uh, teaching as well. She's been teaching English and also social media um, and training. So a very beautiful broad base of experience here. And what I'm going to do is ask these lovely ladies to each kick off by sharing a little bit about their journey and what has brought them to do what they do today. So Chantal, can I ask you just to get us started? Just share a little <laughs> bit about where you come from and what you've been up to. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much for the introduction. Um, I've been in the communications industry for 18 years now. Um, up until then, I didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up. <laughs> grew up. <laughs> I fell into the industry by sheer luck. Um, before then, I was a senior insurance, short-term insurance broker and um, did that for many, many years. I'd been writing, editing, and proofreading um, then already, um, but never really thought about what I was actually doing. Then I joined an NGO, an international NGO, and they had an, um, a vacancy in the communications department. And I applied, and I got in, and that was the beginning of my communications journey. Um, after that, I joined a PR company, um, I've been working there for 11 years before I opened my own business four years ago. So in all, I've been doing what I do for 27 years and um, figured out it was my actual passion. Communications is my passion. I love it. I love helping people communicate. Fantastic. I love that, Chantal. Awesome. So um, a mix, really, of working, like you say, in the corporate space and then also in the NGO space and also as an entrepreneur. And yeah. what a lot of different experiences. I've also, I haven't worked, well, in fact, I have worked on a massive conservation project, so a bit of everything and a lot of corporate um, and very different. Just, just to pick up on that, what would you say um, from the point of view of having your own business, it's also been quite a few years, am I right? Yeah, yeah. four years now. Four years, yes. Four and, years. It's uh, actually been five years, but as a company, four years. Four, oh, so that's how it works, yeah. And a couple of little lessons that you've learned along the way as an entrepreneur with that transition. Do you have any any little comments yes. come to mind? <laughs> Lots. Just persevere, persevere. Persevere hanging in there, believing in yourself. Because there's often when I used to think, oh my gosh, I've got to go back into corporate. There's nothing coming in. I don't know what to do. Um, no matter what I'm doing, nothing's coming through. And then just suddenly it just opens and people get to know you, your first clients, and then you get them to you know, speak about you and tell other people about you, word of mouth, wonderful thing. And yeah. um, then it's just suddenly happens. So it's just 
believing in what you can do, I think, and um, and just persevering. <laughs> lots yeah. of perseverance, lots yeah. of perseverance. But um, yeah, that's I think the biggest change between working for somebody and working for yourself is realizing yeah. that everything is up to you. You yes. know, you've got to make it happen. Somebody else isn't going to make it happen. You've got to make it happen. And um, but it's so rewarding. I love it. I love working for myself. Yes, <laughs> beautifully said, Chantal. I agree with every single word that you said there. And um, I think every entrepreneur I know, there's a there's a classic um, little infographic that they do with the you know the ups and the downs of entrepreneurship because we really do have those highs, like you say, of the incredible fulfillment of doing what we love, and then we have the lows when exactly as you say, you know, there's the ebb and flow. And um, mm. often, uh, we have found often that it's related, you know, we've been had our own business for 20 years now, um, initially a, a alongside corporate, but it's also that thing of getting lots of business in and being so busy that you neglect the marketing side, um, mm. especially when you're kind of doing everything. So um, it's a tricky, it's a tricky thing to navigate. But it is. And then also just working with other people, I think that helps. And like you're saying, you get so busy that you forget to, that you can't do everything and help it's not, it's not bad to ask for help. It really isn't. And look yes. for people who can help you. Um, you don't have to hire them, you know, as a, a an employee. But work with people, you know, yeah. and partner with people. My partner's up there, Donna. You know, we <laughs> do we do a lot of work together, you know. And yes. um, I help her. She helps me. You know, and and that's how it works. I think you've got to look for opportunities um, to not only do work yourself, but to partner with people. Yes, beautifully said, Chantal. You're dropping the pearls of wisdom here already. <laughs> and, I know. Uh, brilliant, Donna. And Talana has just joined us. She says, hello, looking forward to learning. Hello, Talana. <laughs> Lovely to have you with Hi. us. Thank you for joining us live. Um, and yes, so true, Chantal. We also um, use freelancers often. Um, and the other thing is to surround yourself with other people, and especially us women, we, we wired this way to network with each other. And it's so lovely to connect with you two today as well, um, to be in support of one another. And that's been invaluable for me also over mm -hmm. all the years, um, just to know you're not alone and to be able to bounce challenges around between you. Mm -hmm. So amazing. Yeah. So, Donna, let me bring you in, hun. You are looking lovely <laughs> over there. Would you like to share with us your journey? Um, yes, and with regard to setting up your own company and what has really led you to do everything that you do today? Well, um, I studied fine arts when I was a tech, and I always knew from a very young age I wanted to be in the creative space. And I had this, like, idea that one day I was going to graduate and I was going to be like Van Gogh and I'm just going to sit on the, on the side of the road doing these portraits and just like being famous, you know. But it didn't actually work out that way because painting didn't uh, bring money in to put food on the table, basically. So that was more of a sideline thing. So um, 16 years ago, I decided to become an entrepreneur. It was a very big step for me. Um, yeah, uh, if, I, if I think back, it was actually like one of the biggest things in my life that I could have done. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I haven't looked back since. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I like the thought of being my own boss, of being in control of my own destiny, mm -hmm. and at the same time, being creative, which is what mm -hmm. I want to do. I just want to be creative in everything I do. So um, I, be, before that, uh, I worked for a newspaper. I worked for a photographic studio. And then obviously my last position before I started my journey was working for the South African Human Rights Commission. So all these positions taught me so many different skills, the stuff that is actually quite priceless. It taught me people skills. Um, that I couldn't have learned anywhere else but in these positions. So that is where I come from and everything in my life, I just like to be creative, whether it be with people or with my work or with the things that I enjoy, um, that is me. And, you know, like Chantal said, um, she's my partner. So 
we kind of, the, the day we met, we kind of clicked. Mm. I, I, I don't know, it must be like a relationship made in the stars or something because <laughs> we kind of think the same way. We never had to explain mm. ourselves mm. to each other. We just like picked up and went on and it was mm. amazing. So that has also been in the last, I don't know how long I've actually known Chantal, Mm. the last couple of years part of my journey as an entrepreneur so mm. it's been very exciting <laughs> fantastic <laughs> oh that's magic i love the vibe between you guys it's just beautiful um and donna kudos to you 16 years is a long time to be in your own business and um fantastic and i i relate to what you're saying that it's probably one of the biggest leaps most of us make who are entrepreneurs yes yes definitely uh, yeah, um, and also that you were working as well for the Human Rights Commission. You have both really done some some meaningful stuff um, also. And uh, in that position particularly, I learned so much about life and people, and it actually helped me on my journey. I mean, if I hadn't had that experience, I don't think I would be where I am now. You know, that that I don't even know how to put it in words. It was a very big part in how I shaped myself as a business person. So wow. it was very invaluable. Yeah, wow. Was that through the people that you were working with or the sort of subject matter that you were working with in terms of getting the touch with? The people that I worked with because I okay. met so many people of different mm. cultures and yeah. languages and colors and religions. Yeah. So Amazing. it really opened my eyes to a lot of things, you know? <laughs> yes, and and how does that integrate into your design work? What, is, is, what type of design work do you typically do, Donna? Well, um, I do uh, what the client wants to portray. So um, it, it, it's different all over, like each person is different and everything I customize for that person. So a design for Chantal will never be the same as a design for you, ever. Yeah. It will yeah. be your personal thing. And that is that is my personal touch I bring to it. Okay. And she's amazing I, at it. She's amazing yeah. at it. She just knows. She 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 I'm sorry to get in there, but she, <laughs> she connects with the client so well. And she actually really and truly figures out what they want. They don't even know what they want, but she figures out what that she wants, what they want. She's amazing. No, oh, thank Sorry. you. <laughs> oh, thanks, Chantal. Um, so, so mm. Donna, so I just want to understand a little bit more. So, so are your clients mm. mostly entrepreneurs, corporate, a bit of both, Everything. medium businesses? Um, I've I've got very few corporate clients, but I've got quite a few small businesses. Okay. Um, yeah. Also, startup clients, and yes. I've done a lot of work for government over the years, and mm. also oh. for seaters. So, okay. I've kind of got a a bit of everything. Yes, and and what type of thing would it be? Would it be like designing a brand, do, doing a logo and, and a corporate identity, that sort of thing, or it's product? It's everything, or, from, really? from marketing materials to okay. annual reports to okay. lo logo design to brand identities, anything you can imagine, I can make it reality. Yay, <laughs> yeah. okay, I love she this. Can. Okay, and then, so so do I see the connection here then that you are doing the visual side more, Donna, and then Chantal's coming in and putting in the the, the, the writing context? She's putting the meat in there and I'm the doing meat. it. <laughs> okay, and our multiple brains are always come up with magic, don't you find? For sure. It's for awesome. sure. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Chantal, let, let's let's move a little bit to the strategy side. So, from a communications yes. point of view, um, again, what are your typical type of clients, and what type of strategy would you put in place? What would you say are kind of the core things? And most of the people watching are more than likely entrepreneurs. We do have some in the in the you know business corporate space, but um, you know we're pretty much most of us in business of some form. So, can you give us some guidance there with in terms of a communication strategy? Sure. Very much like Donna, um, I also have a, a wide range of clients. I mean, also from corporates all the way to NGOs, to small businesses, to startups. So basically anybody who needs help in the communication sector, I do. 
So um, when starting a, a, a a strategy is very, very important. It's that whole plan of how you're going to go about doing different things. And there are five elements to um, a strategy that you need to look for. Um, and we basically say it's the five W's and the H. So it's the who, the why, the what, to the where, and the how. So who do you want to communicate to? To whom? Okay. So that's very, very important. Um, it's the most important part of the strategy, of any strategy, is identifying who you want to get your messages to. Um, then you'd say, why? Why do I want to communicate? Um, so you have to identify your objectives and your goals. And it's just like everything else. It's, it's, it's looking at that kind of stuff. Um, why do you want to communicate to your audience? Um, so, you know, that's quite important. I just said that already. What messages do you want to uh, um, communicate? Those are your key messages. And everything that we do with a client, um, when you've got your key messages sorted, um, everything that I do, your writing, your um, social media posts, whatever we do has key messages in it, um, but in a way that it's not totally obvious, if that makes, makes any mm -hmm. sense. <laughs> um, and then we look at the where's and the how's. So where are we going to do it? What tools are we going to do? How, you know, how are we actually going to implement it? And then also one of the most important parts of any strategy is how to measure the, the, the strategy, how, how to me measure whether your messages are reaching the target audience. So that's basically the most important part. Um, strategies are incredibly important. Um, and it, you can use a strategy for so many different things. I mean, even when Donna and I started our podcast, um, we actually created a strategy. We oh, identified who are we looking at? Um, you know, what are the typical people who would we want to listen to our podcast? You know, how are we going to do it? What tool are we going to use? You know, um, and how are we actually going to, what are we, what, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to get my voices like I'm so passionate that it's terrible. Um, it's wonderful. There's so, much, there's so much you want to do and say, but sometimes you hit a brick wall. And your your every tool that you do, everything that you do is only as good as the plan and as the content. And you when you hit that brick wall, then you come to an end. But if you've got a plan in place and you've got ideas of how you're going to, what messages you're actually going to do, then it helps you. And if the proverbial bus hits me, Donna can take over because it's there in a plan. Wow. You see. <laughs> yes, don't even say that. <laughs> don't leave me. <laughs> but that's the importance of a strategy. It's, it's, it's really and truly planning your messages. In a, you know, it can be a short, and it can be for a short-term project, it can be for a long-term project, but it's planning those messages. Who are we actually going to reach in this project that we're doing? How are we going to reach it? What tools are we going to do it? Why are we doing it? So that's basically the crux of a strategy. Yes, I love that. Thank you, Chantal. And I love what you said there about your messages not being obvious as well. Um, that's actually the first time I've heard it expressed in that way. And I, I love that. Um, that subtlety of the mm -hmm. golden thread and a sense of, of what follows through with the messaging. Um, and I'd be interested to see, you know, your take on the photography and videography and how to integrate all of that um, also with the communication strategy. It's, it, you know, it, I sit very much with a client and then we actually, you know, Donna loves this word, she always laughs when I say it, I interrogate it. Okay. <laughs> I interrogate it with you and we, we like work yeah. with it with each other and, and, you know, I say to you, who, what, when, how, you know, that kind of yes. stuff, just tell me. Yes. And then we work it and I, I go back and then I work on your strategy, I work on the hows and the whys and, um, you know, Donna knows, she's seen what I've done and, and how I kind of, as you said, it's that golden thread into everything. I weave the key yeah. messages into everything that I do. So like you said, it's not obvious, but yeah. it's there. Um, yes. One of my clients is an NGO as well and everything 
has their vision or their mission oh, in it beautiful. in a way that you actually don't even know. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, beautiful. so for yours too, the video and the the the, the photography, there's so many ways of doing it. <laughs> my mind just boggles i've got just, i'm yeah. one of those people where i see everything at the end i see the end products yes. yeah so. stunning and so um so chantal do you actually implement do you do the social media posts on behalf of people also or give them the yeah. strategy and let them yeah it's up to the client you know some clients have a communications department so then yes. i'll do it I work with the communications department and then yes. they implement it. Some, yeah. especially small businesses. Um, I've done a lot of um, social media for small businesses because they just don't have the time. Like we said no, earlier exactly. on, you know, we yeah. can't do everything. And yeah. um, so a lot of the time I take that over and I implement yeah. the social media strategies. Um, like with yeah. the um, my NGO client, I do yes. a lot of their social media um, yeah. particularly the Twitter because they do the Facebook, but they don't know how to do Twitter. So I do the Twitter. So Brilliant. yeah, it just depends on the clients. On the, okay. And, and also the measuring, so important. Mm. And um, also oh, such an easy thing to put aside, especially when we're super busy and, and it's maybe not mm. the exciting part as well, not the fun part of creating. Um, I'm with Donna. I also just want to create all the time. <laughs> Um, but you see, and that's the problem is that you are, you've got all these ideas and you want to do all of the, the social media things, but you don't have the time. Plus, yeah. you run out of, of, of ideas. And that's where the strategy comes in, because you sit yes. beforehand and you think of all the ideas that you want to do. You look at the different months and the different things that are happening in that month. How can I actually take those things, for example, yeah. Women's Day, how can I take Women's Day and use that within my messages? So yes. there's... It's, it's planning, 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 planning. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yeah, wise words. Okay, so Donna, I just want to pick up there on what Chantal was saying about your, uh, uh, my golden retriever is with me. He's just brought me a present. Sorry, ladies. Uh, let me show you. If you will let it go, this is the present. <laughs> Thank you, Storm. <laughs> I love him to bits. Um, so I, where, what Chantal mentioned there about doing your strategy for your podcast, um, I'm quite fascinated by that. Um, can you take us through that a little bit, Donna? Also in terms of, you know, I think many people watching, I know Talana, she's been podcasting for years, um, and she shared a bit of that on one of our full, uh, one of our um, live stream sessions a few weeks ago. Um, but just in terms of your, your choice of where to host it, you know, just some techie choices, and then also your choice of topics, because how wide open is that, actually? Um, mm. Can you lead us through that a little bit, Donna? Well, firstly, before I go into that, the way this started is Chantal and I were planning to do training for clients on, on what they should do when they've got design projects, like they've got an annual report or a pamphlet or something. How do they collect information? What are the best photos to use and everything? And Chantal and I had a Zoom meeting, and this was during, I think, pretty much hard lockdown. And... Mm -hmm. This Zoom meeting took a totally different route because we started off chatting about training and stuff. But within like 10 minutes, we had veered off into, hey, why don't we do a podcast? Um, I don't know how it happened, but it did. <laughs> um, and, and it's just continued from there, you know. Um, Chantal and I each play like a different, a different role in the planning like she had a lot of knowledge about the technical things like where to host it and all that stuff um i did a lot of the designing for the artwork and um, for the cover um in terms of the um content or the the subject choice um we're not short in that department because chantelle and i are both passionate about a lot of things and um i'm sure as she has as well I don't have a platform to talk about the things that matter to me. And this was just the perfect place to talk about all those things. And, and I'm glad that it's, it's doing what we wanted it to do because you, Naomi, said yourself, you, you like listening to it, to all these different subject matters. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I can't wait to do my next one. We're already on episode three. Um, I think Chantal is the... Is, her, the episode four is hers but um i wish we had more time in a month to do more episodes because mm. it's very exciting 
it's fabulous. And for everybody watching, we were um, just chatting a little bit before we went live. And what I was saying to the ladies is that I've so enjoyed their podcast and I really find it very grounding and humbling and moving. Um, the three different topics that so far I've been listening to was um, the first one was about the the recycling pickers who assist mm -hmm. so much with recycling. And it's, you know, typically people that we almost overlook. We, we're not aware of how much is going on around us and being done by everybody in their own humble way, making a contribution mm -hmm. to, you know, within our world to and to us, actually. Um, and then the second one was to do with the aged, uh, elderly people and COVID. And wow, that was also so moving to listen to, you had interviewed some of the elderly people about mm -hmm. their experience. And what I was saying to the ladies for you watching, um, Talana, sorry, she says, I only got to listen to the first episode too. Talana, watch some more. Um, you'll enjoy them. So what I loved about this is I also follow some of the big name podcasts international and in the US in particular, and I really enjoy them. Um, but very much the focus is on interviewing famous people, and which is great. We can all learn, obviously, from them, but we can also learn so much from each other and just from within our own space. Um, and that's what I loved about yours. And the third one was to do with... Um, with wildlife trafficking and oh gosh, well that just really hits to my heart. So very much, very um, grounding topics that actually mm. are so much part of our world that like I say, when we get all carried away with our own business and our busyness, we sometimes you know, forget about that. So thank you ladies for, for bringing the attention and putting the spotlight on those things. You're welcome, Asia. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, um, so, just in terms of that, did you have any challenges, just you know, with regard to like the tech setting up, you know, just for people who might be wondering, well, where, what do I do? Where do I, you know, what platform do I use, and that type of thing? Chantal, do you want to pick up? I'll oh, go first. You. Okay. In terms of challenges, so um, to try and do a podcast and sound natural and still be able to talk about everything you want to talk about. In the beginning, it was like script reading, you know, and, you know, you you've, you make sure that you, you don't forget to say this and that and that. But as you get into it and you become more relaxed, it actually becomes quite natural um, that, that people don't even know that you even got notes in front of you if you do have notes. So that was one of my challenges. Um, as I'm speaking now, I've got a few notes I'm looking at. So <laughs> oh, <we're> good. <laughs> Nothing wrong. I can't do without them, but yeah. I'm getting better as time goes on. And, and that's what people will find if they do podcasts. It'll mm. just get better every time. Exactly. Yeah. And isn't that the truth also for this, for live streaming? Um, and that's why it's so for fun. Sure. Oh, come on, Chantal. <laughs> look at that face. Tell, tell, tell us so your nervous. Face. Oh, but you look amazing. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. But um, yeah, Donna's very good. She, she's, as she says, you know, um, I find it very difficult um, because I'm so nervous. I, um, I do, I know I, I had some comments from the last one and they said, you need to do a bit more breathing exercises and stuff like that because um, I find that I am a little bit too stilted where she's very good. Donna's very relaxed. She's, she's getting so damn good at this. It's scary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, you know what, I think it is, it's um, trying to find the way to become more natural. Um, and that is hard. It's very, very hard. I'm not used to it. So we have to get used to that. Um, the more you do it, as, as Donna said, the better you become. Um, don't be afraid of taking, of doing like seven takes mm -hmm. if you have to. We do it so many times. We do the first one and we go, ah, this happened. No, let's do it again. <laughs> And then something else will happen and let's do it again. And then yeah. my biggest challenge is I don't have soundproofing here. And whenever we decide to <laughs> record, my road outside decides to become a highway and mm -hmm. I have 100 cars going down all the time. Then yeah. at the same time, the entire neighborhood decides to go running or walking in the neighborhood, which sets my four dogs off barking <laughs> while we're busy recording. And then when they stop barking, then my bird decides to serenade me, even oh. though she's downstairs. So, you know, you've, you've got to kind of work with those things. And so often we go through several mm -hmm. uh, takes to try and get 
a tech that's good enough for us to actually use. And then we still have to work on it with um, the editing tools. So often we sit there and we, we edit and edit and edit and edit because we're trying to get it. Um, you can still hear that we're not perfect on our um, recordings. We're still, we're still learning, you know, we're and um, we're not, yeah, we're not afraid to say it either. I mean, I posted yeah. on Facebook that you saw, I'm still learning. Sound is not brilliant. Forgive us. One day we'll get as good as Talana. One day. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, and note, so yeah. yeah. No, I'm just going to say, on that note, I don't know if you watched the interview I did with Talana, but one of the things that she spoke about in quite depth um, and with a lot of wise words was to do with overcoming those fears. And she had that with public speaking. And she's got an mm -hmm. ebook about that too. So it's worth connecting with her and just um, having a look and, and having a listen because, yeah, and Fono, <laughs> yes, exactly. Talana, are you there? <laughs> because it is, I mean, it's such, a, it's such a valuable skill and it's exactly what you're saying. It's about the practicing. Um, yeah, but brilliant. So, just quickly, what editing what editing system do you use? We use Audacity, okay. or however you want to say it. We call it Audacity. But okay. um, you know, I did most of the editing in the beginning because yeah. you know it, it's something I, I like doing. And then Donna's been doing it as well, and it was it's user friendly. Hey, Donna, mm, very much. Yeah. Mm. Fantastic. Okay, so just audacity.com or, or would that be okay? And, and it's just for audio, not not visual. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just audio. It's for audio. Just That's audio. Just nice mm -hmm. to know. Um, and mm. Solana is commenting here. She says, You're doing great. If you heard my very first podcast, oh dear. Practice and experience <laughs> helps so much. And then she says, Yes, anytime, get in touch and we can compare notes. <laughs> Brilliant. Please Thank do that, you. ladies. Yeah. Um, because Talana also has fantastic subject matter. She really, she does mm. great interviews. Um, and mm. she gets, something Talana does really well is she gets people to be vulnerable. She asks them leading questions to get into like the heart of the matter and to do with their challenges too, which is great. So brilliant. So Donna, can I switch gears slightly and come back to you and ask you about the design side of things? So with regard to, you know, really getting impactful designs together, what, what tips can you give people? And what are really the keys to great design? Uh, what are the things that we need to think about and build into our branding? Okay. Um, first of all, you've got to be yourself. You've got to be authentic. Whether you, whether you are the brand or whether your business is the brand, um, People like to work with people and you just need to be consistent throughout. So speak the same voice and always be who you are because people will see through that and go, well, that's not really Donna. Why is she even doing that design or doing that post or whatever? So for me, over this lockdown period, I went through a kind of journey of my own, a, a refresh of my brand, if you want to call that. And um, what I discovered is that I have to be myself um, in the design, in the voice, in, in everything. So people can see that person is true to what they're saying and how they're doing it. Um, in terms of, of the actual design, that depends from client to client. So for me, impact impactful design is something very simple and to the point. If you can picture like a, a white background and you have one word in there that says passion and then it's got Donna Reed designs and my contact number. For me, that's very impactful because that um, shows exactly who I am. I'm passionate about creating. So. Um, this is something that I can offer my clients because I myself have been through it. And what better case study than yourself? So um, yeah. once again, like I said before, the design really depends on the person. Mm -hmm. So for me, that design would work. Maybe that design wouldn't work for you. But mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing I build a relationship with the person and then I find out who they are. And then I put them down in a graphic format. 
Brilliant. I love that, Donna. I love everything that you said there. Um, and starting off with, yes, absolutely be yourself. It's the first thing I always say to anyone about being on camera. And you're doing great. You're being yourselves, ladies. Yeah. Um, and also the simplicity. Mm -hmm. And as you were talking about that, um, I could visualize it instantly. You know, you were saying passion with Donna Reed Designs. Love it. And what it brought straight to mind is um, an advert that I saw. It was a Dove Soap ad. I think it was a woman at home a couple of years ago. And I've spoken about this. You've probably seen it in my course, Chantal, you're nodding. Mm -hmm. And all it was was a blank page with a little bar of soap right in the middle and the one sentence small underneath it that 4% of women worldwide consider themselves beautiful. And it was, a, it was a transformational moment for me. It was the thing that triggered everything in terms of my coaching, confidence on camera coaching, because I had never considered myself beautiful because I grew up with the squint, but I thought it was only me. And um, massive impact in such a simple, small and clean design. So love that. You've, you've just given me goosebumps. <laughs> wow, thanks, Donna. <laughs> yeah, no, it was incredible. It was a turning point completely. Mm. Um, so mm. amazing. Thank you for that. Um, and with that in mind, do either of you have any, you know, stories of, of clients who've had, you know, that sort of a moment, you know, where they've had, you've done a campaign or something that's really been like dramatic for them? Sure. Chantal, do you want to? <laughs> Um, sure. Um, just Donna and I have worked on quite a lot of things together. Um, and yeah. some of the things we've done have been amazing. Um, if I think about SACPS's 50th anniversary, um, their South African Coal Processing Society. Okay, um, coal. As yeah, in coal. Fuel. Coal, okay. as in the stuff yes. that you burn. That you burn, that are, um, that are ESCOM needs. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, okay. <laughs> We did their 50th event, you know, um, their, their dinner. And just the things that we did for their dinner was unbelievable. Um, Donna came up with the most beautiful design for the invitation. And that yeah. design that she did for the invitation carried through to the entire event, um, the decor. Because the, the client said to us, and this is how it works with us too, the client said to us, okay, the colors we've chosen is gold and black. It was gold and black, eh? Gold yes. and black. And that's all they said to us. And then Donna oh, wow. went back and <laughs> exactly. All they said to us. 50th anniversary, golden black. That's it. Wow. And okay. she went back and she came up with the most beautiful, beautiful design for the invitation. And that design for the invitation carried through to the entire look and feel of the event. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, We've also worked on that same company. We worked on a, a, the 50th anniversary book that we did. Um, mm -hmm. I did all the writing for it. Um, I did I did the research for it, did the writing for it. Um, I also organized the advertising for it and stuff. And Donna did the design of it. Um, it was beautiful. It's a coffee table book. They're very, very proud of it. Thanks. I'm very yeah. proud of it. I know, yeah, you you know it, 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 <laughs> it's beautiful. And um, again, it was just her and I worked together so nicely because I said to her, this is how I envision it. Yeah. And she went away. She did, she made it happen, you know? Yeah. So for me, those are two of the most amazing incidents that we've done. Um, yes. you know, I think that's beautiful. I, I, yeah. They just, they were just so beautiful. I mean, that 50th anniversary was beautiful. That event was beautiful. Yeah. People walked in and they went, wow. wow. And it's that excitement of creating something from nothing. Isn't it amazing? I, I love that too. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so um, that's really also what you've done with your podcast. You've kind of created something from nothing. And I loved what you said about how you had that conversation and it just veered off in that direction mm. and happened to become a podcast. <laughs> Um, so do you have do you have any vision for the podcast relating back to your businesses um, or is it really more to do with general topics? Donna? Uh, for me, it's all about what I feel inside here. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it may never ever materialize into anything for our businesses, mm -hmm. but uh, it's just putting the stuff out there that I want to talk about. And like mm -hmm. I said, sometimes I don't have a platform to do that. 
And this is the perfect platform for that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, love that. And yet, don't you find, I mean, all of the different aspects of ourselves, they're all tied together, really, ultimately, even if we don't always know at the time. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's all part of us. It's the, so like the conservation story, Dave and I were involved for three years. We did, we just dedicated our lives actually to conservation. It was really the photography and the video side uh, for the rhinos at that stage it was a couple of years mm. back. Um, but it's so integral. There's so much experience that comes from that, that sort of flows in together and, and informs the work we do now because we did such a lot of photography and video at the time. Mm. So it was all of that experience too. So um, amazing. Um, um, I'll, I'll, what, did you want to say something, Chantal? No, don't know. No, no go, Chantal. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I so, said too much. It's Donna's turn. <laughs> <laughs> Donna, tell me more. So, so Chantal has actually given some nice tips also for, for the for the people here um, who might be watching, who might be struggling in their own businesses and needing that little bit of encouragement. So exactly, I loved what Chantal said earlier about the perseverance side. And Donna, you've been in business for 16 years. That's that's a long time. Is, is it yourself alone or are you in partnership as well? I know obviously you work with Chantal, but do you have any formal um, partnership? Uh, no formal partners. Um, I have a few people that I work with here and there, but Chantal is my main, yeah, my main person. You know, yeah. my people. Your people. <laughs> my people so, yes. Yeah. So, so like, I think also probably many of the women watching, they're probably many solopreneurs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's a tough road. I know. Um, for me, I'm very blessed that in our corporate and commercial business, I work with Dave and. I can't even tell. I mean, I, I think I would struggle to even be in business if it wasn't for having him. Um, and then I've got my own, which is really um, on the side for the personal branding. But um, Donna, do you have any any encouragement or advice for women in particular um, going through their own businesses? You've also mentioned you work with startups too. Um, just things that you've seen them bump up against that you could just give them a few words of encouragement. Um, so firstly... You know, when I started up my business, being a creative person, um, I don't have a head for numbers, you know, accounting and all that stuff. And I've had to teach myself as I've gone along the way. And I found that you must surround yourself by people who give you positive feelings and positive feedback and um, constructive feedback. So for me, my husband played a very big role in my life. He still does. Um, yeah. He taught me a lot about the actual running of a business because I'm always behind the computer, but oh, what about financial statements and all those things? So you need somebody who can help you with the things that you're not good at, your weaknesses. But those things also make you who you are. So you need to play to strengths and you need yeah. to embrace your weaknesses because mm. at the end of the day, you need to be true to yourself. I mm. can't say, wow, I'm such a good writer. I'm not. That's mm. why Chantal is my go-to girl because mm. she knows exactly how to put on paper what I've got in my head and vice versa. What she's got in her head, I can put into paper in terms of graphics and stuff like that. But what I wanted to say to people, um, and I'd like to use this example, motorbike riding. So I oh. ride a motorbike. Oh, well, my husband it. will love you. Oh, he is <laughs> such a fun <public> car. <laughs> Go, um, Donna. Yes. So for me, riding is 10% physical and 90% mental. Wow. So if, if those people who do know about bike riding. So um, it, it's something that makes you think. So... The things that I do to, to practice, because riding a bike is all about practice. And working in a business is also about practice. You need to practice. You need to do things over and over. Those things that you're not comfortable with, like the accounting, for instance. So with bike riding, I use a visualization. So one of the things I used to struggle with is a very tight U-turn. So it's not like a car. You can just go, Shh. with a bike, you've got to, have your balance right, you've got to like put your body in the right position, you've got to turn your head in the right position in order to do it without falling. So I keep visualizing myself doing this turn and I do it over and over and over. And just like in business, you do it over and over. Um, 
you visualize that you want that perfect client. So yeah. to get to that perfect client, you visualize and you do it over and over and eventually you will get there with practice. So for me, it's just keep going, keep at it because you will get to where you want to be. You will visualize it, you will get there. That's oh, how power I... of the mind. Yes. Brilliant. I love this, Donna. And so does Talana. I see she goes, yay, I ride a scooter. And you're so right. Your mindset is a big part. So ladies, I'm afraid I'm an epic fail on the mindset with motorbikes because Dave used to race for nine years before I met him. And he is a racer by nature. And so he actually hadn't had, he was caught in the sanctions. He's a bit older than me. So this was back in the day. And mm -hmm. so it was a bit of unfinished business and he didn't have a bike when we met, but right after we got married, he's had bikes ever since. And it was for about five years, I'd say, when we first got married, I was in a state of permanent fear for his safety because, yeah. you know, he's not the guy who rides the scooter. Sorry, Talana, nothing wrong with scooters, yeah. but for him it's <laughs> super bikes. It's not even yeah. Harley's, it's super bikes. Yeah. So the faster the better. Um, so that was a, one of my biggest, well, probably my biggest challenge in our marriage was that, was coming to terms with getting past the fear. And I totally relate to what you say about the U-turn because I tried riding, I've tried once or twice, I'm, I'm just not a, a biker, but I tried and I was riding a bike and um, we were at a, at a track and uh, it was quite a biggish, heavyish bike, but quite low. So my feet could touch the ground. And as I pulled up to a little stop sign, it was unbalanced and so my one foot was too far down and of course the first thing that happened is I fell over. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see where you're going with the U-turn thing um, and yeah. the visualization. I love what you're saying about visualization and especially visualizing ideal clients and mm -hmm. imagining them loving working with you and wanting to pay your rates without any mm -hmm. you know, question even. And we do get clients like that and it's just so magical when it starts coming together because the joy of working with people mm -hmm. of like mind as well is just yes. magic. So yes, that is brilliant advice. Thank you so much, Donna. Um, <laughs> Chantal, would you like to drop in? Have you got anything to add to what Donna yeah, said? I actually do. I, I think you've got to know your worth, all right? Yes. Um, mm. Especially women. We, we tend to put ourselves down a lot. We tend to, especially in business as well, we think, oh, you know, I need the business. So I'm just going to do whatever I can. And I'm going to, you know, we cut our rates. Um, we don't believe in who we are and what we offer. Um, and I'm to blame too. And I'm trying to get over it. Um, I'm worth a lot more than what I often put out there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to change. <laughs> no, not too much. <laughs> but know your worth. You know, um, if you believe in yourself, people will believe in you. Yeah. Um, I believe. <laughs> Too many beliefs. But believe in yourself. Believe in what you do because yeah. nobody else does it unless you do it. If you, if, yeah. if you understand what I'm saying. You really do need to believe in yourself. And like Donna said earlier on, surround yourself with people who lift you up and who have the same mindset as you. Um, I love the whole concept of mentors. I love yes. this whole thing yes. that you've done, the groups. Um, I follow quite a lot of inspirational people um, mm -hmm. just to try and get that whole feeling. Uh, business entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs who I'm learning so much from. And that's exactly where I learned about not um, not valuing myself as a, as a, a business lady, you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, get mentors and, and follow people and learn from other people. Don't be afraid to learn from people and don't be afraid to ask. If you don't know something, ask. And people yes. are just willing to help. I've noticed that. I mean, with your Facebook group and other Facebook groups that I've been on, other female entrepreneurs especially are so willing to help each other. And yes. that's what we must do, you know, especially as small businesses. If we don't help each other, nobody's going to help us. So mm. be there for each other. Let's let's be there for each other. Yes, beautifully said, Chantal. All of that. I love it. Um, and exactly what you're saying about knowing your worth. And the thing is, I also love this. I follow a number of, of mentors um, online. And one of the big turning points there for me was winning the scholarship to Marie Folio's online mm. B-School, which was amazing. And so she's one of my big mentors that I follow. Um, but what's so nice as well is to really come to understand that 
we don't all need to be, you know, that big mentor. We all have our space. And that's what I was loving about your podcast. Every one of us has our place and every one of us can help people in our own way. And sometimes you don't necessarily want a mentor who's so far ahead. There's so much value also in just someone who's maybe three steps ahead of you. And we can all learn from each other exactly and support each other. It's magical. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yes. And it's that other side, and there's another thing that I saw is let your smile change the world. Don't let the world change your smile. Oh. You know, and it's the same with all of us. You know, you can make that difference. Like you said, you can make a difference in somebody's life. Don't yes. make somebody's bad day make your day bad too. It's, it's kind of working yes. the same way. My mind goes in a million places. But yeah. Beautiful. You know, just um, actually, be strong. Be strong. I'm just thinking be there strong. was a quote. Oh, there was this quote that I shared on the group that I just loved. It just hit me. That said, act as if what you do makes a difference. It does. And mm. It does. Yeah, it's it takes so you back to that starfish. You know that story about the exactly. starfish? Do you want to share it? It takes you back to that tell. story, yeah. So yeah. a little boy was, um, I can't remember completely, but basically what it was is somebody was throwing, there were, a, a beach was filled with um, starfish on the beach. And you know they're supposed to be in the water. And a person was throwing the starfish back into the ocean. And somebody else came and said, why are you doing that? It's not going to make a difference. Look at all of them. And he said, you know what? It's going to make a difference for that one starfish. So the big thing is that you think that whatever you do is not going to make a difference, but it can make a difference to one person. And I used to work in an NGO sector. And when I first started, I used to get so upset because I thought, oh, I, want to, I want to save everybody. And then I realized, hang on, I can't save everybody, but I can save that one person. And if I can save that one person, there might be a ripple effect. Yeah. So that's that's how I always wow. think the ripple effect. You yes. know, you can't save everybody, you can't change the world. But like no. Donna said with the reclaimers, you know, our first episode, the reclaimers, yes. they're making a difference. One mm. each, each one of those people yeah. are making a difference to our country. Yes. They're Absolutely. taking the what would have gone to a garbage heap, they're taking that away and it's being recycled. So just for those watching who might not know the term reclaimer, what do you mean by reclaimer? Um, you know, when you watch the people, when you take your garbage out on your day and you've got those people going up and down the roads, they call them pickers or garbage pickers or whatever the case may be. We prefer the term reclaimers because they're taking those things out of your dustbin, which would otherwise go to a... Um, uh, a garbage heap what's it called <laughs> I can't even remember now um, and it would go there a landfill and it would just make such a lot of uh, problems for the, the country and they're taking it out and they're taking it to a place which can then recycle those things so they really do play an incredibly important uh, part in the recycling uh, um, efforts in South Africa so yeah, yeah. wonderful Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Donna, what, what else do you have in mind for your podcast topics? Because it's quite exciting. You've been talking lately. It's been on the wildlife conservation side. Am I right? Yes, yes. So um, I don't want to give too much away. Oh. <laughs> okay, be like that. Um, uh, I, I won't say much about Chantal's, uh, her, her episode is the next one, her topic. Um, but I definitely want to focus on, and it, it's close to my heart, is um, people with disabilities and also people who suffer depression, especially oh, now with what we've gone through yes. in COVID, depression. Wow. You know, yeah. it's like one of those stigmas, you know, oh, yeah. you know, she's crazy or whatever. Meanwhile, you don't even know what that person is going through. You don't yeah. know what steps they've had to walk in those shoes so yeah yes. that's the type of thing sometimes it can be a bit heavy but yeah. Chantal and I think I think we make things a little bit light you know so yes. people do enjoy it but also yeah. get informed about what we're speaking about so yes it's very meaningful yeah. 
Thank you, yeah. ladies. That's wonderful. Would you like to, do you have any final thoughts or, or also to let people know how they can find you and where they can find your podcast and your businesses, your websites? Donna, you first. <laughs> Madame, Madame Mürgens, you go ahead. <laughs> so, okay, okay, Chantal, so, give us so your website for, and let us know. What can we, how can we learn from you? Okay, so um, for me, for personally, um, you can go to my website, which is www.cmfreelancing.co.za. Um, you can email me on Chantal, that's C-H-A-N-T-A-L, at cmfreelancing.co.za. Um, and our podcast is, you can email us on our podcast, which is podcast things that matter one word at gmail.com um, and our if you want to go and listen to our uh, podcast it's on iona.fm um, and it's also in a, a number of other places but your yeah, iona is our best place brilliant what is iona i saw that and i hadn't seen it before is that a, a platform? lot of the it's a platform and a lot of the radio stations, especially the South African radio stations. So it's I-O-N-O. -O. I think it's I-O-N-O. -O. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, a lot of the radio stations actually use that platform. Um, and there's a lot okay. of other, you know, podcasts on there. But we liked it because it was South African and we support yeah. South Africa. Local is lacquer. <laughs> <laughs> Local is lacquer. So, yeah, yeah okay. so that's where we, we decided to use that pl platform. Hey, Don. Mm. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And Donna. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chantal. And if I can ask you to just drop your details maybe below this video once we finish, just so that if people want to contact you, they can. And then Donna, would you give us some details for you? Okay. Um, so my website is www.drdesigns.coza. Um, but the other day I found this really nifty app to do um, all my platform connections and everything on one page. So it's called www.flow, F-L-O-W, dot page, forward slash, Donna Reed Designs. So all my links are there, my website, podcast, uh, um, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you want to call it, all there. So. I would suggest everyone go look at this because it's really a nice little app to to use. Wow, that's the first time I've heard of it. You ladies are a fountain of information. Wow. <laughs> and, Donna's and doing so much. She's coming up and, you know, normally I'm the one who, like, goes and does all this, the, the checking of all the different apps and stuff. But she's been coming, yeah. hey, you must go and check out this one and you must go and check out that oh, one. And she, you know, our whole new, um, you know, <laughs> telling people where to go and, and look at our um podcast she yeah. came up with that one so yeah she's you must listen to this lady she knows what she's doing <laughs> oh well I'll, I'll check that out thanks ladies um and so we we're pretty much coming around to an hour it's been such fun chatting with you both yes, thank you uh, so much I, I can't believe it's an hour it feels oh, like no. 10 minutes exactly how fun is that <laughs> and i survived and you survived do you, you do you have so, ladies, we've got two minutes, and I just want to ask you, because I know you spoke about, you, on your podcast, you interviewed people about COVID. Do you have any little pearls of wisdom for, to leave us with for just the whole COVID situation and, and handling that, dealing with that, with business or personally? Protect yourself. That's Protect all I can yourself. say. Yeah. Protect yourself. You know, um, at the moment now, I'm busy teaching and um, teaching English. I can't put a mask on my face because you have to see my, my mouth. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a whole bunch of, of uh, multivitamins. I'm taking multivitamins, yeah. I'm taking vitamin D, I'm taking vitamin C, and I'm taking uh, a, a Neurobian. Just to try and, and, and boost my immune system, um, I'm washing my hands more, and I'm, that's what I'm doing, because I've got to walk in between I've got to talk. Um, they've got to talk, so they haven't got masks on all the time. Um, mm. And so what? That's what I'm doing. So I'm just yeah. trying very hard. Take vitamins. 
take vitamins. And it's amazing work that you're doing, though, Chantal. Um, you mentioned before we came live that you're teaching migrant workers English. So very valuable contribution you're making there. Mm. Thank you. Good for you. Yes. And Donna, any last thought from you? I think um, because the economy is opened up now um, and it's now almost back to normal, I think people must just not let their guards down because Corona Mona is here to stay for a little while still. So, <laughs> um, and I know a lot of people have got it that, that were fine, that weren't ill, but it's those people that are not going to have it that easy that we actually doing everything we're doing for. I mean, mm. you know, so I, I think just be vigilant. And then one last thing, surround yourself with people you love and who love you. Because yes. that's the only way we're going to get through this. Yeah, that's a beautiful note to end on, Donna. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love that. And I feel that between the two of you so much. Um, and that's beautiful to see. And uh, I know that's something that many of our viewers, I'm sure, Talana, I'm sure you're in this space and, and you know, many, many of the women, we really do have each other's backs and it's wonderful to support one another like that. So again, thank you both so much for coming on with me. Um, that, this is what it's all about and I love it. So thanks ladies for sharing your beautiful insight and inspiration and we will drop everything in the comments afterwards, your details too. And then um, if anybody has any comments, if you're watching the replay, please feel free to leave those or leave any questions and we will be in touch. Thanks again, everybody. Take care. Take Thank time. you.